Welcome to Security Guard Radio at uh, As Is 2016 in beautiful Orlando, Florida. What's your name? My name is uh, Dr. Sue Abu Hakima, and I'm the co founder and CEO of Amica Mobile Corporation. Spell it for me and give me the website uh, S U E or the company? <laughs> Let's start with the company. The company, <laughs> Amica Mobile, A M I K A. K A, okay. M O B I L E, and www.amicamobile.com. And what do you guys do? So we are focused on critical and emergency communications. Um, we've been doing a lot of really interesting, unique stuff. We've been part of Accolades now for about eight years. Um, and essentially, what we focused on from the beginning is being able to get to people in an emergency situation regardless of where they are, what they're doing, what devices that they're using. And um, initially when we started, um, we were doing things like the old school way, which is if you want to reach somebody in an emergency on their mobile phone, you're just going to use their email address and their phone number. But, right. but then we realized that only gives you 30% coverage of the people that are out there. And That's so, all, 30%? Wow. Yeah, it's not, very, it's not very good at all. So what you want to do is automatically discover the networks that people are around and automatically discover oh, their mobile devices brilliant. and do location-based alerting when there's an emergency. So yes, so we're, we're not really trying to follow my group and alert them. We're being agnostic and based on geographic reference. Everybody in this area needs to be notified regardless yes. of who they belong to, who's managing them, who they're with, that kind of thing. And it's possible like that you're running through the airport or you're at a sports game, or any of those kinds of things, and then what? You're not going to have everybody's email addresses and exactly, phone numbers. Right. People don't register. Right. They don't want you to know their phone numbers. And so you need that kind of capability. Now, you're going to laugh because we thought that was the greatest thing since sliced bread. But it, what ended up happening is that when we went to customers, enterprise customers with this, like governments yeah. and Fortune 500s, and they said, well, does it integrate with my access control? Does it integrate with my camera systems? Does it integrate with fire? And then, so we're getting all these questions where we thought we'd invented the greatest thing since sliced bread, but the customers made us be very, very practical in terms of what we do. And so then we had to do the ability to take the dynamic events. So somebody breaks in, bro opens a door, uh, somebody, uh, you know, there's a fire going on. And now at this show, what we announced was the integration with um, active shooter detection. So okay. the ability... And you know how big a problem in, uh, you know, it's not only in America, the world, actually. Oh, sure. Yeah. In fact, in America, we don't report half of it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's much crazy. worse than people think it is, yeah. The number of shootings, you know, this year alone is, is gone through the roof. And so, essentially, this uh, these gunshot detection sensors allow us to get a dynamic event. So, when there's an active shooter in a building, as they're running through, we're getting the events. As they're running through, we can follow them and track them. And then combined with our uh, communication capability in terms of emergencies, put this out there to the security teams, the first responders. We can also trigger a lockdown immediately as soon as the first shot right. hits. The lockdown's gone. The voiceover that says, you know, there's a lockdown. Uh, stay in your offices until the all clear, et cetera, et cetera. That's what, you know, that's what we've been focusing well, on. Well, it's brilliant. The show. I, I teach active shooter response, right? Oh, do you? And I also okay. teach uh, behavior recognition to find that guy before he wants to shoot you. Yeah. What I find with the clients I talk to is that the average person at the cubicle wants to know all about it. Yeah. But the cup, the, the corporation doesn't think they do mm -hmm. or is afraid to tell them or thinks they'll think the company's, you know, going to have a shooter if we train with it. Right? Yeah. That kind of thing. Are you finding your clients want this data to go beyond first responders and security when a shooter comes out? My personal belief, if I got a gunshot running through my campus, I want everybody to get an alert. So they become their own personal security guard and personal security yeah, I love that. protector. Yeah. And let's empower them with the ability to make their own decisions. Because at the end of the day, I can't tell you how to protect yourself. Yeah. Especially when everything's going to hell, right? Yeah. Well, what, this, do, what are you finding your clients want to do? Well, they still want to kind of keep the information themselves? Well, what's interesting is that, you know, yesterday here at ASAS 2016, they had a an in interaction exchange on run, hide, fight. And there was a big yeah. discussion and debate in terms of uh, teaching people to do uh, run, hide, fight, and do you teach children this and so on. And what's interesting is I think the most important thing is to get your people ready. You do want to train your people, but you want to get your people ready and you want to empower them, as you're saying, in that when there is an active shooter, I think it's extremely important to do the lockdown and let your people know as soon as they possibly can that something is going on 
and get to safety or avoid that building, et cetera. Right. It's not a good idea to keep them blind. So I no. agree with you. Yeah. And, and there, I, I think the lawyers get involved and say, well, there's liability because what if it's not? And they trip and fall. And I go, at the end of the day, if you didn't tell me there was something going on yeah, and I get worse. shot, it's a you lot got worse. a problem. It's yeah. a lot worse. You're going to create another workplace violence incident because I'm going to be really upset about yeah. that, right? No, it's it's a lot worse. And like one of the things that we were talking yesterday to uh, some of the folks here in, in Orange County and in the convention center, one of the things I think that's, that's very important is that um, essentially it's important to let people know that this is going on, to alert them, indicate it. We also were talking about San Bernardino shooting. Yep. And if they had an active, if they had the gunshot sensor, which, by the way, covers 2,500 square feet per. Per sensor? Per sensor. Wow, that's outstanding. So if they had one of those in the facility that showed that the first shooting actually occurred outside, yep. then what could have happened is essentially the um, individual uh, would have been locked out. So our system would have kicked in, locked all the doors, and then the shooter could not have gotten inside because yeah. he started in the parking lot. Then he went inside and kept on shooting people. And that is, I think, the power of where technology can really help. Yeah, it's it's the most critical uh, because the integration part is something you have to have an imagination for. Yes. You would think that the average person would say, hey, by the way, if I wire the sensor to the door, to the camera, to, to the phone, but the average security person doesn't think that way. Yeah. They're not... Um, they're not creative, nor should they be, per se. Exactly, right? exactly. So many people with PhDs like yourself to figure this stuff out. <laughs> and, and then you got to sell it to them, right? Because it has to be operationally efficient. That's right. I, can't, I can't sell it to them as a PhD. I'll tell you that much. If they don't get it, they don't, they don't buy know. it. I know. That's right. And you got and you got to get them to understand that it's easy and it makes sense. Now, exactly. The thing on, on the detection part, I've heard a lot about audio detection. And yeah. I, you know, I, I use Audacity. I love sound. I've had my own... Uh, radio show a while and when I was a kid I pretended I had a radio show I just yeah. loved the whole sound thing, yeah right? yeah are we at the point where you know that that gunshot's a 45 or do you know it's a nine millimeter millimeter is it so, that sophisticated so yet? we're not that sophisticated yet. however the our partner tracer technologies or one of our partners we're working with several partners essentially what they can do is they can tell you if it's a single gunshot multiple gunshot okay so that so if you know automatic if maybe uh, automatic fire? yeah I think if, if you know that you're getting them in rapid right sequence you know that then it's going to be an automatic rifle um, and then we can also uh, distinguish between let's say a balloon popping or a, a book falling to the floor right. or a door slamming and a gunshot okay the older technologies that have been around for a while are not as good at, at distinguishing between the two and so from that perspective I think we're not at the point where we can see if it's a handgun or if it's a machine gun or something like that but we can certainly tell you if it's single multiple gunshot yeah. And we can also, as the active shooter is running, we can follow that because the sensors will follow the direction of where, you know, each of the sensors will triangulate and they'll, they'll know the exact location of where the gunshot was. And then the other thing that, that you know, I think is really cool with these, these capabilities is they have a portable or something that's actually wearable. And so that could be worn by either a first a, war a wearable sensor? Yeah. Well, that's interesting for wearable, a guard or... Exactly, yeah. a security guard or... And it would know if they've been... If they've shot their gun or they've been shot at. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea. So that's oh, another boy. thing Every I think is really important. That. And so that, all that information, we get the dynamic event from that. And then again, we let the individuals, the organization, or en masse know that there's an active shooting, the lockdown is going on. And away people go. Now, is it one-way communication? Does, it's does the message way. go out? It's two-way. It's really cool. Okay, so I'm pinned down in a classroom. I've got your notice that there's a gunfire. I'm not leaving the classroom. And now you I, can, look, at, I you look out can, the window and I see the guy walking by and exactly, I want to tell people. Can exactly. I? Exactly. You can text me. You can okay. respond to your email. You can respond to a pop-up on your phone. You can even, if you get it by voice, you can respond by voice. You can, And so... For us, that's why we call it communications. It's not about notification anymore. Oh, that's a good point. It's really yeah. two-way. It yeah. has to be two-way because you need to know who's really in trouble and where your resources, especially when an incident like this happens, where she, you should be going first and who needs the most help right now and who where are you going to send the you know, the people to take out the active shooter and all that sort Any of stuff. Any GPS uh, functionality that I can look on a map and say, I got 20 people here that are on the network and here's where they are? Exactly. And that's that's the whole point of it is you want to be able to, with the automatic discovery that I mentioned at the beginning, which yep. we thought was the greatest thing since sliced bread, you can actually know where the devices are because of the networks. You know where the individuals are. 
At the same time, you've got the sensor information in terms of the gunshot and where the active shooter is going. And you know where your people are with respect to you're looking at their devices and right. you're discovering their locations. You're also tracking them. So that if you need to escalate, right, if you escalate from one person to the next. And that was one of the reasons I think we're part of accolades again this year. We got another accolades uh, finalist award there was because we have unlimited escalation and zonal escalation. So that means if I know you're the security officer that is within this zone, within this region, and I know it from the network information, I can put an alert on your device. I can actually get right. you out that way. Now, uh, a lot of privacy issues nowadays with people's phones. And Do we have to opt in to belong to this? Or no, does actually. Or does the employer say you're going to have it, or how does it work? So privacy is a really good question. We've, we've gotten that quite a bit. And so we've checked with you know, the people that regulate privacy and so on, when it comes to first responder information, when it comes to saving somebody's life, right, it trumps privacy. Okay. And we're not keeping... I agree, by the way. And we're not keeping any of the identity information. Right. So I know this is a device, but I don't know it's Chuck's device. It's a device. I just don't know whose it is, right? And I know it's in the area, which is the hot zone, right. where there's a shooting going on. So I need to put a location-based alert on that. Okay, that's good. And when the emergency is over, I throw all that information in the garbage. I don't keep it. Good. I don't sell it to Google. I don't do any of that stuff with it. I think I have, uh, I probably signed up for it, but I don't know for sure. Did I sign up for the Amber Alert program? Maybe I didn't. No. So iPaws, for example. Yeah, so I iPaws is one of those government agency alerting systems yeah. that will get any of the information through NOAA or any other uh, government emergencies and what it'll do is it'll be able to, it is able to, sorry, not will be, it is able to, if there is a situation, like there's a tornado, if there is a, a demonstration, or even if there's an active shooter, or heavens forbid, a terrorist attack, um, what what will happen is the government agency alert is pushed out to your phone. Now, in the case of uh, the, there's two systems like this. So they'll do it by the zone in terms of the cellular network. So if your phone is in that region, in that zone that's affected by the tornado or the hurricane, right. you will get alerted. So what we do is we do pick up the iPods feeds as well. And that, again, is provided to the uh, organization, whether it's an enterprise or a government organization that may need that alert. See, I, I always, I, I know it doesn't work this way, but I always thought it worked like this, uh, <laughs> like a telecaller, a tele, you know, they just have a list. And my, my number, you know, 652 6400 and there's also a 6401 and a 6402. It just called every mathematical That's sequential way, number. Yeah. And then you're going to hit phones that way, right? Yeah. But this is not that now. This is No, this is not we're that. We're, we're finding um, uh, the EMI number on the phone or whatever. You know, we know that that's in a device. So it is connected. It is a confirmed notification. Yeah, exactly. Okay. What the, the key is the difference between that is that, to me, the old school ways, and by the way, a lot of our competitors are still doing it this way. Oh, interesting. Way. Okay. So the old school way is to have your email address and your phone number. That, to me, is the old school way. A much better way is to do it more like the iPod system and the way that we do it, where you do the automatic discovery of the networks, and then you put the alerts based right. on the region or the zone, the hot zone, where you need to alert. So you don't have to tell all of the United States of America that there's right. a tornado coming in. yeah. yeah. You know, Orlando, I heard there was one that actually uh, was yesterday here in Melbourne. It was not pleasant. Yeah. It's a lot of rain, I'm telling you. Yeah, so there was so actually a tornado. So you get that's more regionally focused. Yeah. It's a zonal piece of information that's more relevant. But in theory, you could notify the whole United States if you had you to. You can. And I'm sure the L government will And the government day. has that. Yeah. So there's a system called the Emergency Alerting System, or EAS, from the United States, from the President of the United yeah. States. And so there you can opt out of some of the things, but you cannot opt out of the EAS system. And so that is there for emergency in terms of, of the whole country. Um, now, what is your tin can and wire backup? And I ask people this question all the time because if we're in this zone yep. and this is the problem and we're part of the, the problem zone, can you operate and get that word out if you're contained inside that area? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. In other words, maybe it's so catastrophic that we lose all the towers, we lose yeah. all the stuff. So I think if you lose all communications... It doesn't matter anyway. You're it's out all of luck. Gone. Yeah. You're out of luck. You're okay. done for. That would have but to be I, something so but catastrophic. But the thing that is, I think that's cool about what we always assume from the beginning, and this is in talking to first responders, is that you cannot assume anybody's going to be on any particular device or a network. So it doesn't just work for one thing. It has to work 
simultaneously on everything. Right. We get requests from customers saying, well, I want to opt out and I don't want it to go to this network and so on. And so in those particular cases, that's quite a, a risk that you're taking. If all of a sudden you're turning off stuff that could save somebody's sure, life. Sure, exactly. It's too and serious. And you're going to be liable. Yeah, it's you're going to be liable, right? It's, yeah. it's going to be something that you're going to have to deal with. So as long as you know your loudspeakers don't go down as all your other networks and uh, like if if you have at least one method of of notifying or letting people know something is going on you'll be okay the other thing that's really interesting that i've also heard people say is within uh, a public event like at a concert or a football stadium or something like that it's five minutes as soon as something happens it takes within a few minutes that one person will then just tell the next person. So that's, well, that's another method too. of notification. Yeah, yeah, it does work though. I, I use this. I know system, it's old school, but uh, but sometimes that's the best. I used yeah. a system called uh, Call Them All uh, to staff guards when oh, a guard company, cool. and I that's had to cool. get five hundred guards on post for the Academy Awards. I couldn't call every one of them. Yeah, so I'd send out voice broadcasts. Yeah, and so I knew that, that they got the message, they could affirm, and that and. So all the redundancy is good. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. I think uh, that's very critical. And I'm hoping, I think that's really critical. I'm hoping uh, DARPA is probably still up and running somewhere. <laughs> I'm hoping, right? <laughs> Dr. Sue, thanks for coming on Security Guy Radio. Thanks very much. Give us your Dr. website and uh, name of the company again. So it's Amica Mobile Corporation, and our website is www.amicamobile.com. Thanks for coming on Security thanks Guy Thanks very Radio. much. Dr. All right, bye. Take care. Wow, that was great. She's a star, right? Thanks. Yeah. Bye. All right, good.